Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Haltex Technically Speaking. Today, we're taking a look at fuel injectors, how they work, and what you need to know before choosing an injector for your build. Firstly, what is it? Well, a fuel injector is an electronically controlled solenoid, so think valve, which the engine management system controls by sending a very specific electronic pulse width in order to deliver exactly the right amount of fuel to your engine based on its current operating condition. In order to do this, the ECU needs to know the injector flow rate and the injector dead time. So the injector dead time is the amount of time it takes for the injector to open and start flowing fuel after it receives that pulse signal from the engine management system. This is usually around one millisecond or one one thousandth of a second, depending on the injector type, which when you think about it, is pretty incredible how fast that's opening and closing. It's important to give the ECU the correct injector flow rate and the right injector dead times so that it can accurately calculate the correct amount of injector opening time to provide exactly the right amount of fuel in order to achieve the desired air to fuel ratio. So you really need to make sure that you buy an injector that comes with the flow rate and dead time data. This is critical. The fuel injector has two wiring connections, a 12 volt supply and the signal wire from the ECU. If you use a multimeter to measure the resistance in ohms between these two pins, you can determine the impedance of the injector, which is normally somewhere between about one and 14 ohms. Just about all engine management systems can control injectors with a resistance of around eight ohms or above. So they're referred to as high impedance, but not all of them can control injectors with a resistance of seven ohms or below. This is known as low impedance. So make sure your ECU is capable before purchasing. Uh, a tip here is that all of the Haltech range can control low or high impedance injectors, except for the Rebel series. The Rebel series are high impedance only. A rule of thumb here is that older, heavier steel body style injectors are typically low impedance, while the later, lighter plastic body injectors are typically high impedance. To find out how many injectors you'll need, you need to count the number of cylinders you've got. You'll need one injector per cylinder and you'll find them located after the throttle body, but before the inlet valves in the cylinder head. Next, we need to consider the injector flow rate. This is the amount of fuel, so typically in cubic centimetres or pounds per hour, that the injector will flow at a specific pressure. For example, the Bosch 980cc injector will flow 980cc at 43 psi, a differential fuel pressure. Then, 1150cc at 60 psi of differential fuel pressure. What is differential fuel pressure, I hear you ask? Well, that's a bloody good question, and that's one that's often misunderstood. Differential fuel pressure is the pressure across the injector. That is, the fuel line pressure minus the manifold or the boost pressure. For example, if we have 55 psi of fuel line pressure and then 10 psi of boost pressure, then the pressure across the injector or the differential fuel pressure is 45 psi. In this case, the injector would flow 980 cc's per minute. Now, if only there was a device which allowed the fuel pressure to be mechanically referenced to the inlet manifold pressure. Enter the rising rate fuel pressure regulator. This device is mounted in the fuel system after the fuel rails and it has two functions. It allows us to set the desired fuel pressure and it increases or decreases the fuel pressure based on the manifold pressure reference hose. If the manifold has 20 pounds of boost pressure, it'll increase the fuel line pressure by 20 pounds. If the inlet manifold has vacuum in it, it will reduce the fuel pressure by the same amount. This means the pressure across the injector will always be the same, resulting in the injector flow rate remaining consistent, resulting in a more consistent tune. To account for any inconsistencies, we can also add a fuel pressure sensor to the system. Then we can map out the fuel injector size versus the differential fuel pressure. This is a really good way to protect against potentially dangerous lean out conditions from a bad fuel pump or a blocked fuel filter. The ECU will add or remove fuel based on that fuel pressure. It can also trigger an engine protection condition alerting the driver that something has gone horribly wrong. 
Next, we need to determine what size fuel injectors the engine's going to need. We need to know how many injectors there are, what fuel you'll be using. So petrol, ethanol, a mix, methanol, the maximum horsepower expected, the maximum engine RPM expected, how efficient the engine is, and how much headroom you'd like left in case of future modifications. This can all be a little bit tricky and it's hard to know exactly how efficient the engine's gonna be or how much power it's gonna make until it's tuned. It's a bit of a chicken or the egg situation. So this is a very general rule of thumb. The Bosch 980cc injector is capable for all power levels up to around 60 kilowatts per cylinder on E85, about 80 kilowatts on petrol. While the Bosch 1462cc is capable of around 100 kilowatts on E85, about 130 kilowatts on petrol. Once we've determined which flow rate we need, it's time to tackle the physical injector size. Firstly, we need to determine the injector length required. This is the distance in millimetres between the top and bottom O-ring. There's three common lengths and they are short, 34 millimetres, medium, 48 millimetres and full length, 60 millimetres. Next, we need to determine the O-ring diameter required to fit into the fuel rail. This is typically 14 millimetres, but it can be 10.5 or 11 millimetres. And finally, if your engine accepts 34 millimetre injectors, it's as simple as greasing them up and putting them in. But if your engine requires longer injectors, you'll need to add an adapter between the injector and the fuel rail. These are available in a range of different lengths in order to fit the Bosch 980cc and the 1462cc injector into just about whatever rail combination you've got. As you can tell, there's quite a lot to selecting the right fuel injector for your engine. But as long as you stick with a brand like Bosch Motorsport who offer fuel injectors intended for our high performance environments, you can't go too far wrong. The Bosch Motorsport internals are specifically designed for all fuel types, including fuels which contain MBTE additives. They're supplied with quality O-rings that won't swirl and they won't split and they're sold in flow match sets to ensure each of your cylinders gets exactly the right amount of fuel. An absolute must when you're pushing the limits. If you wanna learn more about the injectors we recommend or the injector adapters available, I'll leave a link in the video description. Thanks very much for sticking with me till the end. I know it's been a long tech heavy video, but there's just so much to learn when it comes to fuel injectors. My name's Scott, catch you next time.